Hi, and uh, welcome back to the uh, W1 XWX ham shaft. Today we're going to show you a little bit more about this new Flex 3000 that I got my hands on a few weeks ago. I've now got it up and running on a PSK31, which is a digital mode in uh, amateur radio, and I'm on 20 meters right now at 14.070, which is where uh, hams uh, locate themselves to do text messaging over the radio. So it's kind of a neat mode. It doesn't require a lot of power. I'm running about 35 watts right now uh, out the long wire antenna from the flex. So I'm only using 35 watts to make uh, these contacts. And I have worked DX stations uh, uh, long distance on 35 watts uh, when conditions are right. So it doesn't require a lot of power. So first, I wanted to show you the uh, flex screen a little bit. So we're going to pause right here, and I'm going to do a zoom into the screen. That noise that you hear in the background is uh, the signals coming in. And let me turn the volume up a little bit. Kind of a warbling sound in the background. That's the digital signals coming in. And there are could be multiple signals there. Not just one, but five, six, seven, eight, ten signals uh, in that sound. So let me turn it back down. And I want to zoom up back into the screen so you can get a look at the software that we use to actually decode these signals. I'm using a software package called FL Digi right now and uh, it's what actually decodes the signals and permits you to send out a message back to whoever you're talking to. And that program is free and you can Google that on FL Digi D-I-G-I and you can download it for free. It works quite well uh, with regular radios, uh, analog type radios and also with the Flex 3000. Remember I told you in a previous video that I'm using virtual audio cables and virtual comm cables to connect up the software to the radio which is down here. You can't see it right now. It's a little bit below the screen, but it's sitting down here on a shelf. And we use virtual cables uh, in software to connect that up. And uh, I'm using VSP Manager, VSP Manager, for the uh, COM ports. And I'm using the uh, virtual audio cable called VAC. VAC, Virtual Audio Cable. It's not free, not very expensive, but I'm using that for the uh, sound that goes back and forth between the software and the radio. And that VAC is actually recommended uh, by Flex Radio, so I went out there and got it. But the COM port software is a free download. So with that said, let's zoom on into the screen and uh, I'm going to try to make a contact live right here in front of you and hopefully we can uh, get this little camera to actually see the screen. Uh, I'm hopeful that that'll happen. I'm not sure it's going to happen. Anyway, hang tight. We're going to do a little uh, zoom in here in a second and let you get a close up of the screen. Okay, now we're uh, kind of zoomed up into the screen. I wanted to give you a little shot of the screen before I bring up uh, FL Digi, which is running also right along with the uh, uh, Power SDR software for the radio. So if we'll just click a couple of boxes. Uh, here is... FL Digi, the main program screen, and over here is what they call a signal browser. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four conversations going on right now. 
And if you look at the waterfall down here, I'm hopeful that you can make this up. You can see those signals on that waterfall. So again, I'm tuned to 14.070. It's just software then takes that and separates those signals uh, in software so they're, you can see them and they're not basically interfering with each other. So to determine a uh, spot, you just basically visually look at the waterfall on FLDG and you pick you out a spot where there's no signals. And I've just picked out this spot right here. It's got another neat feature in that there's some uh, canned uh, transmissions that you can set up. In other words, you can type a, uh, a CQ message that goes out. You can type an answer to someone that calls you back that goes out automatically and then you can uh, do an ending, you know, an end to the QSO message. And you can save those and then just recall them and you don't have to retype it over and over again. It just, you call up that particular message and it transmits it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call CQ uh, on 20 meters using uh, PSK31. And by the way, it has virtually every mode of digital that you could want to use all ready to go and all you have to do is select them select the mode that you want to use and of course we're doing PSK 31 that's what we're doing right now but there are dozens of other modes <clears throat> so here we go I'm gonna call CQ right now by clicking the CQ button and you can see my signal and I kind of keep an eye on that to make sure that I am not splattering all over the band. The signal looks pretty good right now. Uh, it's not occupying very much space uh, uh, right now. Uh, so there it goes. I just transmitted CQCQ from W1XWX and I did it three times and then I did it again and said in Texas and then it released the machine and now I'm listening again and here's those other messages so let's call CQ again and see what happens And there we go, and you can see the CQ being transmitted in red up here. If anyone hears me, they will uh, basically click me on their screen over here, and that will put them onto my frequency, and then they'll answer me. And here comes somebody that's answering me right now. So let me copy down. I'm not getting a very good... Uh, copy on his signal he tried to answer me but there's a lot of interference on the band right now so it didn't really come in very well so let me type him a message and we'll send it and I basically said did not receive your signal please send again W1XWX and that's what it's sending right now and then let's see if he comes back and tries again. Yep, he's trying again. Here he comes. W1XWX. I'm going to read it to you in case you can't read it. Uh, from KC8ZBC. KC8ZBC. Now I'm going to put his call sign up here. kc 8 Z, B, C, and then I'm going to answer him. And there we go. And once I put his call sign up here, it automatically adds his call sign to my canned message back to him. So it's actually saying, given his call sign, it says from me, your signal is 599. My name is Joe. Uh, I'm at this particular grid location and I give that and it's in Hunt County, Texas 
and I'm using a Flex 3000 out of a 120 foot long wire. So I'm basically giving him a signal report and telling him something about my equipment. Now I'll wait for his reply. And here he comes. He says, hello Joe, W1XWX from KC8ZBC. And uh, he's giving me a kind of a signal report. And his name... He's on vacation in Park County, Colorado right now. So this transmission is coming from there. He's at his vacation location. And he gave me the grid. Uh, staying in a cabin at 8,300 feet. Near Lake George in Colorado. And it, now it's back to me. And I'm going to simply say, I copy 100% except, I didn't copy his name. And let me send that to him. I basically said I copied 100% except for your name. I did not receive his name. It was garbled. So please send your name. And then I put the initials BTU, which is back to you. And here he comes again, and he says his name here, here is Brian. His name is Brian. And he's coming back to me. And he's giving me a rig report too. He's using a Kenwood TS2000 at 25 watts. And a horizontal uh, buddy pole. He's using a buddy pole setup, which is a portable antenna that you uh, you can buy commercial commercially. He's also using FL Digi with a sing signal link, which is that same device that I have uh, connected up to my ICOM 7000. Weather here is in the mid 70s during the day and 50s at night wildfires are mostly under control but now there's uh, been a mudslide somewhere nearby where he happens to be vacationing and now he gives it back to me and then I'm just going to finish the conversation and give him my sign off where I just use his call sign from me and I say thanks for the PSK31 contact. I will log us on uh, QRZ and on EQSL and also on Logbook of the World and I wish him 73 and good DX and I'm signing off from him. And I'll wait a minute and make sure he doesn't come back with a final. And he did. He said, thanks for the QSO, Joe. 73. We'll catch you later on the airwaves. And he says, uh, please uh, confirm via EQSL or card mailed if you'd like to. And then he puts the date and the time down. Some people do that. And he's signing off now with an SK on the end, which means uh, transmission is over. So anyway, that's basically how uh, the digital modes work. They're text messaging for hams. Pretty neat mode of operation. That Again, it doesn't require a lot of uh, watts to go a long, long way. And uh, I've found generally that folks that work digital are more likely to send you a, either an EQSL or a card than the folks that work uh, voice uh, single sideband. You're more likely to have a confirmed contact on uh, digital modes 
than you will on uh, a single side band voice. That's just the way it's worked for me. I don't know if that holds up for everybody, but for me it sure does. Uh, if you look through my log, you're going to see a lot of confirmed uh, PSK31 contacts. Of course, you're going to see a lot of single side band, but uh, I haven't really done that many uh, digital contacts. So virtually almost every one I've ever made has confirmed the contact. Anyway, that's how this works. Pretty neat setup. I'd advise you to learn how to do digital modes. Anyway, have a great day, 73, clear skies, and see you on the radio and under the night sky. Take care. See you later.